Greetings, I'm Michael O'Connor, and thanks for joining me at The Well. My guest today is Father Jason Nesbitt, and Father, thank you for joining me today. Um, you've, you've seen a lot of incredible churches. You know, you've been to Rome, you've been St. Peter's and the Vatican. Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Filled with gold, precious metals, lapis lazuli. Um, you know, I've been through the Vatican halls and the museum and priceless treasures. And a lot of people look at that and say, you know what? There's people starving in the world. Why don't they sell those treasures and give it to the poor? So that's the question of today's At The Well episode. And so what I'd like to do, Father, is I want to play a short excerpt from Father Burke Masters, who's going to read a part of the gospel from St. John on this topic. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to say a few words. Then I'd love to get your feedback, and I'll add some few words. And we're kind of kind of wrestle with that topic of, why don't we sell all these riches and give it to the poor? It, good for you? Good for me. Okay. And I well, want to thank Father Burke for the work that he does um, throughout our diocese and the work of evangelization and all the many you know, videos and the way that he helps people um, access media. So um, we've benefited greatly from some of his work here in our parish as well. So. Great. Let's hear from him right now. Jesus came to Bethany, uh, and we know who lives there. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. So they had a dinner. Martha was serving, of course. She's always busy about the, the things of uh, service, which is a, an amazing gift. Mary, who always sits at the feet of Jesus, she takes out a liter of costly perfumed oil and anoints the feet of Jesus and dries them with her hair. So this is a very expensive oil, and she just is extravagant with it, giving putting it on Jesus' feet. Judas, and we know what Judas does later, he says, why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? And it says, he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Judas calls her out saying, you know, this should have been sold and given to the poor, but that wasn't his intention. He probably wanted it for himself, the money. And so Jesus stands up for Mary's actions, leave her alone, let her keep this for the day of my burial. So this anointing is a sign of, uh, they would anoint uh, bodies. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. So this is one of the reasons why, you know, some people will say, why doesn't the church sell everything that it has and give to the poor? But Jesus stands up for Mary, who is extravagant on the body of Jesus. And so... This is why we use precious uh, metals for the chalice and the patent for the Eucharist. It's also why we have beautiful churches to glorify God. And it doesn't mean we neglect the poor. The church, the Catholic church does more for the poor, the sick, than any other institution in the world. And so when someone says we should sell everything, look to this gospel. This is where Jesus says, you know, you can be extravagant with me. These are gifts that I've given you already honor the body of Christ and take care of the poor. It's a fair question to ask, like, why do we hold on to these things? Why can we not give them to the poor? But I think that in many ways, the church itself over the years um, has used beauty for many purposes. Um, first is to teach the people um, there was a time when people, not everyone could read them. Not everyone could even interpret the scriptures. And so the stained glass windows at times were catechisms. The symbols, mm. each symbol meant something. The, you know, the crucifix, the, well, we'll start with the crucifix. Or the statue of Mary to, to teach us about our Blessed Mother. Um, it's It was an expression to teach us about who Jesus was and in the most um, in ways that the people could relate with. It when served the, a purpose. Yeah, when only the educated could read. And also, too, we believe that our gathering at the Eucharistic table is a foretaste of heaven. And so many at, at different times, many builders of the churches tried to create 
a vision of the kingdom of God, something glorious, something beautiful, that we're walking out of the world and we're walking into something that reflects the divine. Even though that we are the body of Christ, we are the body of Christ here on earth, and there's something earthy about our gathering, there's also something heavenly being surrounded by the altar and 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 when you see the angels and the saints it's it reminds us that that's our ultimate goal our ultimate goal is heaven and heaven is something more beautiful than we can even fathom and i look at our church for instance um our, our french canadian your french canadian ancestors uh I'm, I'm a tourist here, but our French Canadian ancestors here in Bourbonnais, what they did to to build this church. And in, in many ways, when I walk into it, there's a glorious beauty, but there's also a simplicity mm -hmm. um, that the farmers of the time hauling that rock from the quarry and building this church Amazing. stone by stone, um, but creating a place of beauty where they could come in from the fields they can come in from their places of work they could come in from their family home and um from the struggles of their lives and and enter into a beautiful setting where they could commune with the lord and and with one another and so we see that in they wanted to be a beautiful place you know and we talked about those people that built the great churches of, of europe and throughout the world it, it was generations of people. They might have uh, someone start mm -hmm. the church, and it was their great-great-grandson who finally finished it. And it was right. labors of love. They were very proud of it. That, that People were proud of it. They wanted to give to it. Exactly. Well, let's get the thing is, but when you sit back at it, I worked in corporate America for a number of years, mm -hmm. and the goal of corporate America is to grow wealth. Uh, let's make very clear, the goal of the church is not to grow right, wealth. Right. So, Father, what do we do with the money that you may have donated to you? When you think about the, the um, ministry, Christian ministries, where does that money go? And, and that's really what's, what, what, what we do with today's money. Correct. Um, and and that's, um, that could be a much longer video exactly what we do with the people's stewardship of the church, but I would assure everyone that Every dollar is accounted for, and every dollar is put to work in some way, shape, or form. It's um, it goes into supporting the mission of the church. It goes into um, you know a wonderful staff to make things happen. It goes into programming for youth and adults and children alike. It um, it goes into the upkeep of the buildings and properties and um, the, through the generosity of the people we were made a major step in making sure that um, a number of our our buildings and plant and grounds um, were both safe and um, that our church will uh, not only be beautified on the outside but be more structurally sound and and, and so but but all of these um, the funds that are committed to the church are put into the mission and also to here at Maternity BVM, um, our parishioners, I've never been disappointed in your support for those who are struggling. Any time we've ever needed, had any kind of a clothing drive, food drive, uh, supporting our food pantry, um, that our parishioners have responded so generously and I believe that just as much as we put things into mission and in keeping the church beautiful, that it's also um, the support of the people is also present and helping those. It's helping to feed the poor, helping mm -hmm. to uh, dress the poor. Carry it's, out it, those works of mercy. Corporal mm -hmm. works of mercy. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of where that money is going. Right, right. So as Father Burke had said, there's probably no organization in the world that gives more to the poor. That is where the money mm -hmm. goes to, okay? Is there beautiful uh, artifacts out there, beautiful treasures? Yes, that's kind of, you're saying, kind of mm -hmm. kind of uh, a way to 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 honor God to, um, you know, be our heaven on earth, so to speak. Um, you know, if that was all sold and given away, you know, that'd be, that'd be gone after a, a 
couple of years or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But what needs to go on is giving to the poor and, and feeding the poor and um, giving clothing to the poor. And that is what is being done by the Catholic Church today. So again, that's their, that's their goal and purpose. Not to, there are no treasure chests in your bedroom, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> money, money is uh, all, all going for good causes, so just to show you that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important to say, because I know that comes up a lot. It, they think mm -hmm. that the church has so much money, but you know, the church is us. It's you, it's me, it's our mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So it's who we are and what we do with it, and it's about serving others. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you very much, Father. Any last words at all? Well, thank you so much, and um, it's it's uh, I want to thank you for your effort and um, putting this together. I've enjoyed immensely watching the testimonies of our parishioners, and um, as I, I I hope that there's more times that we can all come together at the well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Uh, keep praying. Keep listening. And God bless. God bless you. Thank you.